triple threat. It puts the offensive player in a great advantage because the defense the whole time is guessing. And I like those odds as an offensive player. Take a look at the top players at every level. The vast majority have one thing in common. It's an ongoing argument in the basketball community now. Is the mid-range game really dead? Should it be? But all great players can score from all three levels. At the bucket from three. And then in the mid-range with pull-ups. It really just diversifies your game so much. So let's take a look at how you can mimic the best ever and come closer and closer to perfecting these pull-ups. So first, we'll start off with a simple question. When do we use a pull-up jumper? So it all starts with an attack. You're rarely gonna get to a pull-up without getting the defender moving backwards. Defenders are likely to turn their hips and transition into a sprint once they feel like they're getting beat off the dribble. It's instinct. So in order to get to that pull-up, you absolutely have to get them moving. And that can come off a dribble. Out of triple threat. Getting the ball in the hands of Carmelo Anthony playing one on one back. Or even with contact like Gilbert does here. But regardless, it has to happen. After this, it's just a matter of being able to separate on that pull up and then being comfortable enough in that shot to knock it down. But it's also important to note that that pull up and especially the footwork on that pull up will many times be different depending on the situation as well as the position and momentum of your defender. So, for example, if your defender gets turned quickly and you read it very early like Kawhi here. That pull-up step should be very short. Just like this clip, you see where Melo gets into it here. There's really no reason to take that long step when your defender is already trying to beat you to the spot. So you just stop short and pop it. Many times though, it will be a long step. If your defender is somewhat behind you, trying to catch up or has just kind of turned into that sprint, you take that long stride into the pull-up like you see here, so that by the time they're ready to jump or they catch up, you're off the ground into that shot. No catching up to that. Think about it like this. It's a race to get into the air first. Take whatever length step you need to get there. And then sometimes you'll have to separate laterally. When your defender's a little bit more in place or to your side, you may have to get away from your defender into open space and knock down the jumper. Leonard just two free throws. You'll notice that your feet should be staggered like Kobe's are here, with that second foot slightly behind the first. This will help you bring your momentum to a halt and rotate your body towards the basket for a more accurate shot. But there are definitely a few things that all pull-ups have in common, that every great pull-up shooter has on lock. So first is a forward lean. Remember what I talked about with getting that first step downhill to get your defender moving backwards? If we're being honest, that will never work unless you're in an acceleration position, which is a lean with those shins and that trunk angle. This will sell to your defender that you're driving, so they're much more likely to turn their hips and give you that shot. Plus, the better of an acceleration position you're in, the more ground you cover, faster, which makes you much more difficult to defend here, period. Second is dropping those hips and shoulders. This kind of goes hand in hand with a forward lean. The lower you get by dropping the level of those hips and shoulders, the more of an athletic position you're in. At this point, not only can you explode into that dribble faster, but you can get that quick pop off the ground into that pull-up. Without dropping those hips, you won't have much power getting into that jump. It's just science. You have less range of motion for those muscles to put force into the ground and develop power to send you off the ground. Third is a delayed pickup. It's important that you never pick up the ball too early. Once you pick up that ball, you have two options, to pass or to shoot, and you never want to trap yourself in that position. So try not to pick up that ball for that shot until that back foot touches and you're ready to pop up into that shot. That way you can easily ball fake and counter pass if the defender closes more than expected. And then the last key we'll talk about is taking a long final step. The obvious reason for this is to get that extra bit of separation you may need into the pull up. And yeah, that's true. But taking a long step here also creates a deceleration position by making that shin angle negative. 
So in other words, your knee is closer to being fully extended than it is to a 90 degree angle. This way you also strike with that heel. This combination will help you stop your forward momentum and begin to redirect it upwards, which is vital once again to having that pop off the ground that you'll need. So as you can see, a lot goes into pull-ups. But with a ton of reps, the shot will feel more and more comfortable. If you want to learn even more about pull-ups, plus get a whole month of workouts to perfect that triple threat and pull-up aspect of your game for less than $2 a workout, hit that link in the description. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Follow me on Instagram for even more content. And just share the movement. Let's make this something special. Also, be on the lookout for part two. I really appreciate all the support, and let's keep it going.